Hello, my name is Craig Resnick. I'm coming to you from the ARC Advisory Group. We have a very interesting podcast, a couple of uh, smart people that's going to help us make some smart decisions with smart devices. Those two people happen to be Brian Taylor, Business Director of Safety, Sensing, and Connectivity from Rockwell Automation, and Rodrigo Marangan, Global Business Director, Industrial Components Business of Rockwell Auto- Automation. How are you doing today, Brian and, R- and Rodrigo? Very good, Craig. Thank you. Excellent. You know, if the title of this uh, podcast is Make Smart Decisions with Smart Devices, can uh, can one or both of you define what it actually is a smart device for uh, for our listeners? Sure. I'll, I'll start, and I'm sure Rodrigo will have some thoughts, too. But uh, there's a few things we look at uh, for devices. First of all, the device has to have the ability to process data outside its normal sensing function when I look at my type of devices in the sensing and safety field. So that means taking other inputs and creating some kind of data. Uh, to produce more than just what they're initially for. An instance would be a photoelectric sensor that detects an object or not. If we can send additional information back, including like margin indication, maybe the temperature of the environment around that, you know, that device would figure to be a smart device in our definition. Uh, the other thing, though, it has to be able to communicate that information back. Uh, if it just has it internally and it can't communicate it, um, we need some kind of mechanism to communicate that data back to some control system some uh, cloud-based system, some other informa- other compute mechanism to actually take uh, action on those. I don't know, Rodrigo, do you have any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I know. Just adding on that, and uh, you did very well, Brian. I would just add that, uh, uh, in my perspective, the, the smart device is, is an int- integral component or from the smart machine. So, and this, this smart device is the first step to capture operational data. So with that, we are able to take more, you know, smarter decisions and informer decisions uh, overall. Oh, very good. Now, obviously, we're both of you are from Rockwell Automation. Uh, what products do you have in your uh, Rockwell Automation portfolio that meet the definition of a smart device? Okay, we can start with Brian. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have uh, sort of three sort of categories of type of products that we have, and I'll sort of talk about the communication mechanisms because that makes them distinctly different. We do use uh, IO-Link technology for a lot of our standard sensing type products. We have some photoelectric sensors, proximity sensors. Those are things that detect objects, presence or uh, absence of an object. Um, Plus, we do uh, process monitoring like flow, temperature, pressure type devices that use IO-Link to communicate that information. We also use uh, on safety products, so I do have safety portfolio we use a technology called GuardLink to get that diagnostic data and safety data back uh, into the control system. We have uh, non-contacts, which is uh, guard locking switches and products like that. And finally, we, we do put products on Ethernet IP um, to get uh, more data out and things like safety relays, uh, laser scanners, light curtains, encoders, uh, 3D sensors, uh, RFID type products, uh, barcode readers. Uh, we put it on Ethernet IP because there's a lot more information to get back uh, for control and also for diagnostics. Anything else, Rodrigo, you like that? Yes. Thank you, Brian. So for the industrial control business perspective, at this moment, we have uh, basically three big families of products. The first one is, is about the overload relays we, we have in our portfolio. Uh, that is over uh, communication over Ethernet IP. So then we have the soft starters uh, to control motors as well. So we have different models and, uh, again, over Ethernet IP and other networks. And then finally, uh, we have uh, what we call the power monitors. So to monitor energy, energy in the plant, uh, that's overall uh, connected in, in, over Ethernet as well. So that is, is what we have. Uh, uh, of course, it's like three big families and we have uh, uh you know, other products below that, but this is the overall big picture for from the industrial control business. You know, that's a that's a pretty broad portfolio, and I'm sure you're uh, they're being well received by your customers. So, could you give me some application examples about where some of these devices are being deployed with your customers? Sure, Craig. I'll, I'll start with that one. Um, yeah, I would say on our sensing type products, we've seen a lot of success on these and applications where you have dirty environments. Um, those could be a tire plant, could be a paper plant, could also be um, a, a food or beverage plant. Um, and we've seen a lot of success because people in those applications, our customers, in that dirty environment, a lot of photoelectric sensors get debris on the lenses and it actually reduces the sensing distance over time. 
Um, so we see a lot of success in there where customers are implementing those with photoelectric type products. On the safety side, we've seen it range a lot of different applications, a lot in food and beverage, um, auto tire, CPG, um, where they're actually using these safety devices and actually determining, you know, the application, you do a risk assessment up front, um, but that's based on sort of theoretical how the system's going to be used. And they use this data to understand what's happening, uh, determining how many times doors are being opened, e-stops are being hit. Um, actually also using it to understand if something happened outside of the normal uh, scenario to actually take that information and make decisions about productivity and also make decisions about whether they need to do changes around training based on what's happening in their machine or their facility with, around safety. Um, in addition, we've seen a lot of um, areas where doing packaging, and you can think of this today, we have a lot of different material handling applications and packaging with boxes of different size of products we're trying to get as people go in more and more online shopping. Um, we see the quick turnover of changing of box sizes and actually doing from a larger box to a smaller box using this type of technology to do quick turnovers. So they're going to do a large box and they want to switch down and do some small boxes and that switch over of uh, um, sort of uh, in in a, in a packaging application, the box size and what the fill rate needs to be, doing a quick changeover where they used to do it manually. Now they're actually able to do that automatically by using smart devices that can have multiple profiles and switch on, automatically on the fly. I know, Rodrigo, if you had some other ones. Sure. In industrial control pers a business perspective, uh, our portfolio uh, is well designed to, to, to go from a, a range from different industries, right? But overall, we see uh, CPNG as, as a big area where we have a, uh, a lot of uh, overload relays, for example, uh, mines, uh, oil and gas. So most of these applications, uh, the customer uh, is looking to see first real data so they can take uh, uh, and they can see what is going on right now with, uh, related with the motors, right? But more than that, uh, we are seeing right now a demand for, for analytics, but overall, uh, uh, these are the main industries that we see using this kind of uh, products in the overload really, uh, uh, relays arena. In terms of software starters, uh, it's, it's pretty much, uh, more focused on, on mining and, uh, and, uh, uh, oil and gas. And then for monitors, we see that, uh, across the industries, uh, we see de demand in, in, and uses in different, uh, kind of applications. But, uh, for the three portfolios that I mentioned before, most of the time we see first customers looking to have a real time data and then moving forward right now as, as they have this foundation with the real time data, they are looking to put that uh, in, in analytics to have some prediction for, for the future. So these are the most common applications that we got. And uh, just to finalize uh, uh, these products that we have uh, today in the user control business, we have uh, another division in Rocco that we, we provide panels, uh, our uh, MCCs. And they use a lot uh, these relays inside their panel. So where we are providing for you know the, the final product assembled and the pre-configured to be used for for this kind of same uh, industry industry and application. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, that, that's a pretty broad uh, number of applications, and I'm glad to see there's such great ex acceptance of these products. Now, one of the things, of course, that we all we all know from our industry is it's definitely all all based on results and return on investment and certainly maximizing uh, key performance indicators. So, so what kind of uh, examples of some of the results your customers are seeing to help uh, you know justify uh, moving into these uh, smart devices? Yeah, you're correct, Craig, on that one. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what customers always come back to and say, you know, what is that going to do for me? How much money are you going to save me? How much? How many more widgets can I get out the door? So I can give uh, uh, two examples. Um, the first one, and once again, this is around uh, sort of the application I discussed, but it was a tire manufacturer. Um, they were producing uh, tires, in which you can understand is a very dirty environment. And in one of the uh, cooling areas, they would put the tires right freshly after they're made to go in the cooling area. And a lot of debris was getting on the photoelectric sensors. And what would happen is that they would... Uh, start miscounting them, they'd stop and they'd end up getting a jam. And they were saying, they came to us and said they were losing approximately 10 tires a day, sometimes more or less, but average 10 tires a day. 
And what we were able to do is using a smart sensor, photoelectric sensor, we could detect over time that the debris, the rubber debris was actually getting on the lens and that the, the margin indication from that would come back. And what was interesting about this is first we got that low margin to tell it that it was, uh, was uh, being uh, less signal strength and it was soon going to not be able to see objects. But we could actually tell it exactly which sensor it was. There was hundreds of sensors in this application. And so then I didn't know exactly which one it was. Um, so with both the location indication to say this is exactly which one it is, what location, and to say that it has a, a low margin alarm, you could go out there and just clean it. Um, they end up saving over $350,000 a year by tires that they did not have to scrap. So that's a fairly a significant savings, you know, first on the tires and actually saving to the dollars. Another example we talked about is the amount of material handling and packaging areas. Um, this is this quick turnover of packaging. Um, and so customers are seeing recently more and more demand, as we talked about, different sizes of boxes um, and this switch over in these packaging areas that they used to take um, uh, a lot of time to mainly go out there and say, I need to reset everything. And with our profiles that we can download to these smart devices to allow it to say, this is a large box, this is a small box, they actually reduce their operating costs uh, for changeovers by 80%. So they reduced their time by 80%. Um, for that application. So th those two is pretty good examples of very diverse uh, applications and using different capabilities of smart devices to see significant savings. Okay, Rodrigo? Yeah, no, good. And, and uh, from the industrial control business perspective, uh, we have a few examples, but I'd like to share uh, one from coming from the food and beverage industry. Uh, one of the things that, that we see, and talking specifically about overload relays, is that uh, normally uh, we have uh, some customers that they think to put overload relays on the biggest loads in their plant, right? So that is a traditional approach. But uh, what we really rec recommend, and that was the case of this customer that uh, is, is a cookie manufacturer, is not just to take a look on the bigger load or the biggest loads, but to take a look about uh, which are the critical loads, independently of the size. And in this situation, uh, the customer pick up a critical load, meaning a, a motor for a key conveyor that was uh, uh, feeding an oven. And uh, if this conveyor shut down, basically we are talking a, a lot about uh, uh, downtime. And as well, we lose all the, the, the patch that was going or was in the middle of the oven, right? So in this situation, we, we use overload relay. And uh, uh, what the customer reports back to us, it was that he was able to uh, reduce the unplanned downtime by around 30%. And uh, this avoidance of uh, losing this batch uh, in, this, in this oven, so that was multiplied by the lines that they have, it was around almost 800 k per year. So that was uh, the, the, the return over the investment with this simple kind of uh, uh, device just to have real-time data and, and to take uh, uh, action and uh, to, to notice what is going to happen before it happens, right? Yeah, th that's all uh, very, very impressive returns on investments. So I'm sure it's very, very helpful to help your customers to have those cases and to certainly be able to justify these projects going forward. Now, Rodrigo, in uh, one of your previous responses, you had brought up uh, real-time, uh, you had brought up analytics, and I'll start with you, Rodrigo. What, what role do you see analytics playing in the smart devices? And then I'll uh, get Brian's response after that. Oh, perfect. So uh, I, I, brought, I brought this up before because uh, it's, 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 it's very normal right now to, to talk with customers about, uh, about this, 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 this thing, right? So uh, I, I used to talk with my team and, and with the customers that uh, uh, right now we are in a moment that uh, real time is too late. Right. What I mean by that, uh, we need to, to, and we are in a stage that we, we can, and we, we, we are looking to pr uh, have pre predictive kind of approach, right? So when we put together these smart devices, and in this case, uh, I'm just mentioning here some other applications with software, uh, we can put some dashboards and, and these dashboards ca come into play, right? So what we are doing, uh, in this moment, we are combining the real time data with the machine learning. And then uh, with that, we can evaluate the patterns. So every time that we, we see some trends, uh, we can try to precede downtime and other issues as well. So 
can you imagine uh, how uh, powerful is this to try to predict this, uh, to uh, predict, sorry, that something is going to shut down by, I don't know, two hours, 30 minutes, and, and, and four seconds. So you can finalize, for example, the cookie uh, manufacturer that I just mentioned. You can finalize a batch, for example, and then it can schedule a maintenance for the best time of the day. Or uh, you can go further and put more uh, smart devices talking together. So probably Brian is going to... Uh, talk uh, uh, more about it uh, on, on about other components that he has, for example, conditioning monitoring. So uh, if we put all these smart smart devices together between what Brian has and what we have we have in, in, in ICD, uh, uh, putting together in, a, in another layer above meaning software, we can have a lot of uh, we can have a lot of uh, calculations and, uh, and and can put all these data to play to us. So we go after the real time. And we start to have a, a prediction for the future. What is, is going to add a lot, of, a lot of value right now and for the, the future as well, right? Yeah, I agree with Rodrigo. Uh, some very, very good points. And I think it, what I would say is one thing that I see happening is this sort of scalability. Um, we talk a lot about smart devices here. And I think analytics are going to play on the device level. There's a lot of things we can do at a device level to make device level analytic decisions and, and provide that information. So all the information that an individual device has, can we put you know lightweight analytics in the device to allow it to make very fast decisions and provide that information to a higher level system? But I also look at the ability to provide analytics on the edge. So can you take a bunch of devices, smart devices on a machine, for instance, and can you provide that data into the edge compute module where even better decisions are made about the machine? And you think about the next level, you do a plant-wise or an enterprise-wide, the machine-level data, the device-level data, other pieces of data in a, in a plant goes up into the cloud where you can make analytic decisions that are even broader based. Um, and if you just look at the compute power necessary, that sort of makes sense. What you can do in the cloud for sure, you have a lot more compute power than you have on the edge. So I think the scalability of analytics and putting it at the right place to provide that use the data that it has to make great decisions. Um, I think you're really going to see that as a long term play with analytics and that scalability. You know, you mentioned uh, long term and, you know, then I start thinking in terms of, you know, what is the future going to look like uh, for these smart devices? I mean, I think we were. I don't think any of us uh, in March predicted we were going to have a pandemic, which is really going to accelerate uh, the digital transformation trend, especially of remote working, at, you know, from working at home and remote access, remote control. So, you know, taking those sort of factors into account and kind of this accelerated digital transformation, what do, what do you think the next generation of smart devices will will look like? Uh, putting putting your reading your crystal ball. Yeah. So that's that's a very good point. Uh, I think that we can divide uh, and talk here about the usage of the products, right? So uh, we have the, the, the OEMs that they, they build machines, right? And we have, of course, uh, the end user that uh, uh, use the, the, the product in the end, right? I think that for both, uh, uh, it's all about unleash, unleash the power of analytics and digital twin design. So uh, to your point, I think that uh, uh, right now we are living the, the COVID, right, and the pandemic situation. And uh, some companies that were thinking to do that before the pandemic, right now, maybe in the middle or uh, after the pandemic, this for sure is accelerating. So we, we had some, and we saw in the news, uh, a lot of change in a, in a short period of time, right? But uh, just summarizing here, I see that it's all about, about unleashing the power of analytics and digital twin design techniques. And with that, we, we are going to see an increase in, in, in speed of the machine design for sure. We start up, you know, uh, production uh, and, uh, and fast line chains as market needs as we just, uh, or I just covered with the COVID that is a real situation that's happening right now, right? And Brian? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that I think this has made a lot of our customers look at differently at how they do manufacturing. And I think when you look at the smart devices, I, I really see this sort of look at a disposable, you know, wireless type solution to help customers do more preventative and predictive maintenance is something that I see happening. They're going to try to reduce the number of people out there 
Um, and one way to do that is reduce maintenance people or at least schedule maintenance people in there. So having that knowledge um, so that you have operators out there uh, doing production and you can schedule maintenance when the operators aren't there to reduce the, the, the you know, the number of people on a floor and reduce the spacing between people. I see that as uh, sort of a, the future of them. Uh, I also see what well, probably one of the biggest thing about wireless disposable is that people talk about battery life. So, you know, this energy harvesting come into effect such that we can have smart devices that you just sort of stick on to something to help our customers keep their plants up and running with as few as people as possible. So that to me is really the, the future of smart devices is more the devices that are going to provide the diagnostic and pre- predictive information for our customers to have their plants running more efficiently and all that information be able to be gathered remotely. Yeah, absolutely. I think what everybody's looking for is uh, be able to get the single version of the truth, you know, from any location by any person who has the authority and access to get that information and be able to make the best business decisions possible uh, with that information. So, so I think what we've heard today is that a lot of your customers are already making uh, smart decisions with the smart devices that they're acquiring uh, through the Rockwell Automation uh, portfolio. So I want to thank you, Brian. Thank you, Rodrigo, for being here today. And this is Craig Resnick with the ARC Advisory Group. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.